Good afternoon, everyone. What I'd like to do today is demonstrate a problem with the medium wave performance of these XH data. This is the D328, but I think it applies to all of their sort of analog dial uh, radios with this sort of style of dial on it. And the problem is, is that the medium wave band is set for nine kilohertz spacing as opposed to the 10 kilohertz spacing that's normal here in North America. I'm in Toronto, but it would be the same in the United States or Mexico as well. Let me just show you that if you look at something like the Texan PL330, it's got a switch that allows it to switch between nine and 10 kilohertz stepping on medium wave. And we'll demonstrate that in a minute. I'm curious as to whether we can reproduce what this does um, with that by changing the setting. So what I'd like to do first is let's just back this down. Let's make sure it's in AM or medium wave for the rest of the world outside North America. Because of course, all these shortwave bands are AM too on this radio. Let's turn it on. And let's, let's step through the AM or medium wave band. See, that sounds pretty good, right? Well, that one's barely coming in. I have to turn up the volume. Here, I'll turn it up. I got to jack the volume up to get anything out of that. Carpet tax. It is his carpet That's okay. That barely comes in. So you see the phenomenon, right? And there's no relationship between how quiet they are and how distant they are. Most of these stations that I'm tuning in are incredibly strong here in Toronto. This is, of course, this is, I'm just looking, 2.30 in the afternoon, so... We're in daytime medium wave land here. So, and then there's a loud one, right? Right? So you can see that it's not tuning accurately, right? Some stations come in very strongly, some very weakly. And there's no bearing on, I mean, you can move around the antenna position and all that, but there's no, something's wrong with the tuning. If you compare that to an analog radio, and I'll just use the R909 uh, since I've got it here. And we'll go back down to the bottom of the band and we'll get it on medium wave. I don't think we heard French CBC as well at all. But you'll notice, I won't go through the whole band, but you'll notice they all sound about the same volume. Whether there are differences between them really has to do with how strong they are. If we put this switch to DX, then that would jack up the, um, the gain on the whole thing. And, uh, and some of those weak stations would come in quite well. And of course, this late radio is susceptible to overload. It would probably overload some of the ones that I can almost see the transmitter from, from my deck just outside the door here. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's always the issue here in Toronto. FM is overpowering AM stations vary a bit depending on where the broadcast transmitter is. But for those that come from Etobicoke, well, if you live in West End Toronto, they are just booming in there. Okay, so what we showed is that we showed a real break in performance between these two radios. On medium wave, at least here in Toronto, this uh, Texan R909 massively outperforms the XX data 
D328. Whereas in general, you know, this probably gets the nod on shortwave performance and FM performance, I think they're closer, but uh, it's FM performance is very good as well. So is the Texans. So let's see if we can understand why this happens. In order to do that, we'll put those aside and we'll bring out the PL330. So this should be set for medium wave. No, it's not. Okay, we'll set it for medium wave. And we'll set it for hand. We'll get out of the presets and we'll set it for tuning by hand. So we'll notice as we go through, we'll go down to the bottom of the dial. It steps by 10 kilohertz. We'll go up to where there's more local stuff. Even in urban areas. Thirteen ten Danda Street East Mississauga Unit Three. Order now. What's fun is at nighttime on seven seventy you get New York City. And I looked at it for a moment and then I tried to look away. Keep that fine. No matter. Anyway, the point is and we'll go up to 860, which is French CBC, which is very strong here, as you can, well, not the strongest that we've seen, but quite strong. But you can see that they all come in fine. The volume is reasonable, as you'd expect. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking at my framing here a little bit. I'm sorry if I've been off to the left the whole time. Okay, so let's shut this off and let's switch this to the rest of the world's medium wave spacing, which is nine kilohertz as opposed to 10 kilohertz here in North America. So I'll turn it back on. It should default to FM. We'll go to medium wave and let's see what we got. So we start, rather than start at 520, right? We start at 522. And now right, this is 530, but it's at 531. So we're tuned out a bit. Now that's going to go okay on this radio because the AM bandwidth on the Texan PL330 is enormous. If you've got someone broadcasting close to hi-fi on medium wave, this will get it. But, um, so that limits the effect somewhat. But you can see, it's not lining up. So let's go up. So you see we're not hearing, right? This is 640, right? But we see it at 639. And the reality is, is we're getting a whole lot less in medium wave than we did before when we had it in the proper step. If we go up and what we get, right, is weak. And if you were to lower the AM bandwidth, the situation is even more obvious. There was a weird double bill. You know, 820 is the comedy station. So this is 860. This is very close to us. But, you know, we're just bracketing it. So it seems like, and I'm going to turn this back to hand before I get irritated when I try to use the radio next time. It seems like the problem with this radio might be explained by that sort of problem. And let's, let's have do a little experiment. This I have not tried. So let's see. Okay, so this is French CBC. So you can see that okay, we're bracketing it, right? I can go from side to side. I don't know if you could hear those little clicks, but I'm bracketing the station going alongside it, just like I did with this radio. So, I mean, that tells you something really interesting about these radios. Now, most of the stations we've been listening to are incredibly strong here in Toronto. And with weaker stuff, if I were trying to pull in distance at night, 
There are large chunks of the dial where this just doesn't do much of anything at all. Uh, which is a shame because if you look at responses of people who've talked about this, the uh, D328 and um, the is it D309 or 209, which is the current one that people are interested in, um, have talked about how good its medium wave performance is. Well, in North America, its medium wave performance is not very good. And that's because it doesn't set to the appropriate um, uh, and distance between stations. Now that's not going to be an issue on the inter on the international bandwidth, nor is it going to be an issue on FM. So as long as you only want to use this radio for FM and shortwave, that's fine. And medium wave, I mean, it'll probably work for strong local stuff. Its filter is pretty wide, but it's going to be outperformed by the analog radio in that context. It's really a shame XH data doesn't do what some older manufacturers do and hide switch in the battery compartment to allow you to switch between 9 and 10 megahertz. Or, I mean, obviously a soft switch like in the Texan, but this is, you know, this is a considerably more expensive rate. So we're not expecting quite as much from the SX data, but it would be nice if they would. Uh, accommodate those of us in North America who might like to use their products. Okay, well, I hope that was interesting. I hope that demonstrates the limitations of this radio and presumably the other XH data radios that operate similarly. And I think that tells you something useful about buying this as, you know, sort of an emergency backup radio. If you want an emergency backup radio in North America, you want FM and medium wave. Short wave gets you approximately nowhere. In that context, the R909, even though its short wave performance is not up to the same standard as the XH data, even so, this is a better choice. And presumably other um, analog Texans or even other analog radios designed for the North American market or digital radios designed for the North American market. Let me just show you something about that and I'll be back. So this is a, a Ritekis TR605. Um, don't buy this for its shortwave performance. I mean, you might pull in a couple of strong things, but it's not worth it. But as an FM radio, this is really quite good. And it's got a flashlight and it's got an 18650, which it charges. I bought this for my daughter as a camping radio and, you know, she enjoys it quite a bit. So let's turn this on. Okay. You can hear the tick, tick, tick of a digital tuner. So we know that this is a digital radio. So it's like the XX data. It's not like the Texan, right? This is a digital radio with an analog style tuner. Let's put it in medium wave and let's have a look at how it does. And let's see if we can see the same sort of phenomenon that we saw with the SH data on this. I've got to say, I haven't tried this much in medium wave. And your situation with extensive for a second consecutive season. So I think that makes it clear. This Ritekis, the TR605, is designed with a 10 megahertz um, station distance, distance between stations for the North American market. So this actually performs really quite well on medium wave, I think. So I've got to say, I haven't really tried it at night or anything like that. Um, but uh, what that shows is that the problem is not the basic design of the SH data, it's the implementation. And there, this radio, which is a presumably designed for the North American market, gets it right. So there you go. Radio for the car? I don't know.
something like this, you know, it's got a flashlight, right? It charges over USB. It's 18650 though, which a lot of people don't like. Not so good for sitting in club boxes, but you know, something like this, which is designed for the North American market, looks like a better choice than the SH Data 4. And go old school and go analog. All right, hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.